what do you think this is? And they'll point to the radiograph and you're looking at it like, I have absolutely no idea what it is. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another video. If you don't know me, my name is Jess and I am a vet student here in New Zealand. This week's video is going to be something I've never tried to do before. It's something that I've never tackled before on my channel. We are going to be doing some veterinary science basics. When I say basics, I mean these are things that I think would have really, really helped me starting vet school, going into placements, going into clinics. If I'd known some of this stuff, it would have helped me not done really stupid things in practices. So I'm gonna give you some really, really basic information. Um, I've made a little PowerPoint. What we're going to cover, we're going to cover TBRs, what that means and what they are for certain species. We're going to do blood pressure, some basic anatomy and some radiograph basics. Everything is going to be time stamped below in the description. So if there's anything that you want to rewatch or you just want to skip to, then 100% go and check that out in the description because I don't expect you to watch the whole video if you don't want to. Okay, so we're going to start off with TPR. If you hear someone in a clinic or in your classes say we're going to take some TPRs that basically just means when you have an animal in front of you you want to measure their temperature their pulse and their respiratory rate because these are three vital signs that are really really important to know when you're assessing the health of a patient you do not need to memorize any of this stuff yet but I just thought I would put it here in case you want it these are the normal temperatures heart rates and respiratory rates for dogs cats rabbits cows horses and birds dogs and cats are probably the most important if you're just going to a normal veterinary clinic. Because we work in Celsius here in New Zealand, I thought, like to think of a dog as give or take around 38.5 degrees. And with cats, again, like around 38.5 is probably your ideal number to see on a thermometer. You take this temperature rectally, so you have a thermometer that you insert into the rectum with a little bit of lube and press it to the side of the rectum so that you're not just putting it straight into some poop and you'll get a completely wrong temperature because poop is obviously not the same temperature as the actual mucous membranes. For pulse, or heart rate. Normally you, what you will do is auscultate with a stethoscope around the heart and you will listen for the heartbeats per minute. It depends on the size of the dog. If it is a large dog it can be as low as 60 beats per minute but if it's a small dog it can be as high as 140 beats per minute. Um, so all this information is here for you if you want a screenshot go ahead. If you're ever asked to take the heart rate of a bird just ignore it unless it's a really big bird. <laughs> it can be absolutely impossible to tell. Same with mice and rats. Even guinea pigs sometimes their heart rate can be very very high, almost impossible to measure. Next we're going to cover blood pressure. So blood pressure is basically about the amount of force that your heart is pushing out. So there are two numbers when it comes to blood pressure. The top number is your systolic blood pressure and the bottom number is your diastolic blood pressure. An ideal blood pressure is 120 over 80. Anything below that is also completely fine unless it is really really low so here are some ranges this is a human blood pressure thing i just thought it was good to visualize that's all you need to know in animals and humans that use a little cuff um, you can do lots of different ways of measuring blood pressure but the main way that they do it is by me putting a little cuff on on the animal's arm you've probably had it done when you go to the doctors and they just inflate some air into it measuring thing on the side will tell you the um, blood pressure. The next thing we're going to cover is positions. So in the medical world we have terms for the way that things are positioned. In animals we have a whole bunch of terms that I'm just going to quickly run through because I got quite confused with this. Sometimes I still get confused with this and it's really helpful because vets can forget that students don't understand and they can say some terms and you'll be like 
Sorry, I don't really know what that means. Lateral means it's on the outside of your body and medial means towards the middle. Dorsal means the top of the dog looking down. This is my dorsal side, but on a dog that is my, would be the back. And ventral is the front or the bottom. Tummy is a ventral. Caudal means towards the tail and cranial means towards the head. If you're talking about the head, you want to use caudal and rostral. Rostral means to the nose because you can't use cranial to describe the front when you're working with the head because you're already past the cranial point. But if you're not working with the head and you're working with the rest of the body, then you use cranial and caudal. So you could say that the front limb is cranial to the hind limb or the hind limb is caudal to the front limb. Proximal and distal. So distal means far away. So your hand is distal to your shoulder or um, you can use proximal, which means your elbow is proximal to your hand. And also for the feet, you have palmer and planter. You say this is a dog paw. The top of the dog paw is dorsal, but the bottom of a front limb is palmer. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to check palmer. Um, instead of saying ventral, you say palmer. And for a hind limb, you say planter. Basic anatomy. Okay, so the anatomy gets really complicated really, really fast. And all that I think you need to know is the major veins because these are the blood vessels that you'll take blood from or insert a catheter into. So you have the jugular vein. If I'm really good, I can show you mine. So the jugular veins run down the neck and they often use these to take blood from. So you might see in clinic someone holding a cat with its neck up and they'll take blood from the neck. A cephalic vein is a vein that runs down the front of the forelimb, pretty much right in the middle. You can see here in this diagram someone occluding off the blood vessel and you can take blood from it and it's also really good for putting a catheter in, which is an IV line which you might need to do for surgery. The hind limb, the lateral saphenous vein, you don't take blood or do anything with the medial one because it's on the inside of the leg and that's almost impossible to get to. I've never seen it being done but if you burst both the veins and the front limbs, I assume you would go to the saphenous vein in the leg. If you're inserting a catheter in, you want to put it bevel up. So I have a little photo here um, showing you what bevel up means. But if you look at the needle really, really closely, you can see that it kind of has a pointy side and an open side. You want to put the pointy side down so that the pointy bit is penetrating the skin and then the bevel is facing upwards. Now we're going to move on to internal anatomy. I found it really, really hard to find a good picture for this, but we're just going to run through internal anatomy. Uh, this is in another language. I don't understand, but I'm going to give you the English translations. So up here is uh, the cranium or the head. Here we have the larynx and the trachea and here is the esophagus. Got the, the lungs are the pink bits. You've got obviously the heart in the middle. This here is the liver. Separating the uh, lungs from the liver is the diaphragm. And here is the stomach. Then you have the intestines. Here we have the small and large intestine. This is the um, spleen. Here. You can't see the kidneys because they are more dorsal, but the kidneys are about this level. This here is the colon and um, the urinary tract, I believe, and then the pelvis and the tail. You'll get taught way more than that and in way more detail when you're actually a veterinary student, but that's just the basics. Now we have mucous membranes. So these are really, really helpful in clinic to determine the state of the dog's well-being. The color tells you a lot. So for example, um, normal mucous membranes are like ready pink. If they're pale, this means that they are either severely anemic or they are dealing with not enough uh, blood flow around the body so the heart's not pumping properly. Yellow um, or icteric means uh, that the animal is suffering with jaundice so this could be indicative of a liver problem or some sort of red blood cell breakdown like hemolysis. You may also see cyanotic which is blue mucous membranes which means that the lungs are working really really hard and the animal is not getting enough blood and oxygen around its body. You can also use mucous membranes to take a capillary refill time. You touch the mucous membranes and you time how long it takes to get back to the color than it was before. And if it's a really long period of time, you know that blood flow isn't great. Dogs and cats and horses and cows and sheep also have third eyelids. 
and in some species you can use their third eyelid which will pop out of here if you press down. We'll also tell you the state of their mucous membrane color but not if they're like a highly pigmented animal obviously. Okay so radiograph basics. So radiographs have always confused me and I find them quite difficult and I did when I was first starting out and vets often like to ask you when you're in a clinic what do you think this is and they'll point to the radiograph and you're looking at it like I have absolutely no idea what it is. So we're going to talk about the views first because they often like to throw around terminology like I want a DV or I want a, a right lateral. These are just the basic views. Um, you can have way more complex radiograph views if you want it but it's not very common. So a DV is when a dog is on its tummy, a VD is when a dog is on its back. So a left lateral view is when the dog is lying on its left side, its left side facing down and a right lateral is when the right side's facing down. That still confuses me to this day when someone says I want a left lateral I'm like oh my god is a left lateral left side down or left side up. Here are some examples of how you can tell. So if you get a DV versus a VD, on a DV the diaphragm will look rounded and on a VD it will do the shape of a V so the cruise of the diaphragm will put, put, make a V shape and if it is a left lateral view you can see both of the crura of the diaphragm. On a right lateral the diaphragm just looks rounded but on a left lateral you can see a, a darker shadow and then a lighter shadow in front of it kind of like overlapping and that is the left and right crura of the diaphragm. So on a radiograph I always get used to get confused with this. I know it seems really straightforward when you say it but you might forget it. In a radiograph white means solid and black means nothingness or air or liquid. If you get something that is bright white it is likely to be metal or stone or bone on bone um, that will give you that really opaque white color. Black is a will be liquid or trapped air and so you can see for example in this radiograph that I have down here this is a radiograph of a foreign body in a dog. I personally think this is a stone. You can see here that there is um, shadowy parts. This is air trapped in I think the stomach um, and also the intestines. You can see the opaqueness of the bone but it is not fully white in the middle because of bone marrow and blood and that sort of stuff in the bone. Up here is where the lungs are and you can see that the lungs are full of air. Uh, this is because we breathe with our lungs so they are filled with air. And we also have the ribs um, you can see here and the vertebra. Uh, those are my veterinary student basics or things that I think that you should know when you're going into a clinic or if you're starting out with vet school and you just want some things to start you off. I hope that this helps. I just want to reiterate that I am not an expert. I'm just a vet student and I just wanted to share some basic information that I thought might help you. If I got anything wrong then let me know in the comments below or if you do anything different overseas then let me know about that as well but I hope that this helped. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.